Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to America once again and we're going to revisit a brewery that I only introduced you to on the channel for the first time quite recently. And uh, I didn't expect that I would be returning to them quite so quickly. So for this review, a huge thank you to Chris Contreras who very kindly sent me these beers. He was over in the States for a business trip and did a little bit of beer tourism, came back with a load of cans, sent me one package and then sent me another package with more in it. So, you know, this guy has sent me some ridiculous beer over the last little while. So a big thank you to him for making these reviews possible. And I hope you guys that are watching really, really enjoy them actually. So for this review then, we are going to return to Massachusetts, a little place called Charlton. And we're going to do yet another review from Treehouse Brewing. So this one is called The Perfect Storm. It's a double New England IPA coming in at 8% ABV. And uh, hopefully this is another really good beer. This one is part of their weather series from what I understand and there's a few different beers in this series too so really looking forward to this and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer the other three that I've reviewed from these guys so far were the um, Julius the green and the haze both uh, all three of which I think are part of their kind of regular core range so it will be cool to try some things that I've not really heard of I had heard of those three beers before but these ones that I'm going to try for you over the next few videos um, are ones that you wouldn't normally be able to get actually so again a huge thank you to Chris for making these reviews possible so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Treehouse Brewing Company before no no doubt I will add some more in the fairly near future and you will see more videos in the next couple of weeks. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the American beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Treehouse Brewing then, on to my brewery notes. So yes, Treehouse Brewing, as I've mentioned to you before, are based in Charlton in Massachusetts, which is about halfway between Hartford and Connecticut to the southwest, and Boston in Massachusetts, which is right on the coast to the northeast. But this company was founded back in 2011 by four friends, Dean Rohan, Nate Lemier, Damien Goudreau, and Jonathan Weisbach. But I don't think Jonathan is actually still actively involved in the company, but do correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong on that. But Dean has a background as a plumber, Jonathan was a graphic designer, Damien co-owns and runs a gym, and Nate was a construction manager. But the guys had homebrewed together from around 2008 in Nate's kitchen, but then they moved to a small 2.5 acre farm in Brimfield, which had a treehouse on the edge, and it was that that would inspire the name of this brewery. And you can see it depicted in the art here, which I do wonder how, if it has been designed by Jonathan, actually. But the brewery continued to grow over the coming years, but they moved in 20 2013 to Coran Farm in Monson, which was owned by one of the founders' families, and it was there that they expanded their brewing capacity from 150 uh, US gallons or 570 litres in real people measurements, the metric system, as I always talk about in American, uh, in American reviews. So they expanded it from 150 US gallons to 900 US gallons or 570 litres to 3,400 litres per brew, and they also opened up a tap room on this site as well. In 2016, though, the company bought land in Charlton and they planned the construction of a 53,000 square foot or 5,000 square meter brewery and this went on to open in May of 2017 and they can now produce up to 60,000 US barrels of beer per year or 9.5 million litres. Uh, the previous site at Monson is now home to their barrel ageing programme and I think they're doing a few other things along with that as well and over the last few years they've added a larger outdoor space and added a mezzanine level inside the brewery as well just you know so different things can go on. But in 2019, they also purchased a farm in Woodstock in Connecticut, and they're apparently planning to experiment further with barrel aging on this site, and also uh, open fermentation and sour beers there too. So there'll be some exciting things uh, happening at Treehouse, I'm sure, over the next year or so. Um, Nate is the head brewer, and according to Untapped, they've produced 280 different types of beer as of October 2019, when I made the notes on this brewery. That was for the last three um, beers that I looked at, of course. It's probably nearer 300 uh, at this point in time. You'll probably see this review publishing in like December of uh 
of 2019 but of course when it comes to IPAs you pretty much have to review them as soon as you get them so they're as fresh as possible but in fairness with the New England IPAs you maybe want to wait till they're about three weeks old or something like that just to get the best kind of round of flavours out of them but um, yeah that's all you really need to know about Treehouse Brewing for the moment if you want to learn more of course you can check out the brewery website in the description below you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages just to see all the different things that they do so um yeah let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer itself then and we'll see how we get on so as you can see with this one the artwork in this beer is actually quite similar to the ones that you saw on the uh, julius the green and the haze and um, just a slightly different color there are i have got a couple of other beers that have slightly different uh, artworks on them there you can see the treehouse brewing company symbol there if it wasn't obvious from the label already. Um, but it says on the back here, uh, we are excited that you're holding a delicious double IPA from Treehouse Brewing Company, Perfect Storm. Perfect Storm is an absolutely uh, is an absurdly hopped rendition of Super Typhoon featuring further amplified kettle and dry hop doses of Citra and Simcoe hops. It is one of the most heavily hopped beers we have made. To counter this extraordinary hop addition, we amended the base beer to have more body and sweetness to accept the onslaught. Together, it is perfect storm of hop flavour and enjoyment. Juice. So, um, yeah, uh, it doesn't say on the can, actually, exactly what percentage this is, but on Untapped, it said that this one was 8%. And I think on uh, Rate Beer, when I had a little look as well, it said it was like 82 So maybe the ABV of this one can vary a little bit, of course, but I'm sure the other ones did say the, um, the alcohol percentage on them. So, yeah, maybe it varies from batch to batch with this one. They just kind of taste the war and see what they think and stuff. So, um, yeah, interesting. But this one is a 473 milliliter can, one U.S. Pint, 473 in real people measurements, as I always say. But um, yeah, let's get this guy out then, and we will get on with the taste. And I'm really curious to see how this one turns out. So yeah, get it open and into the glass. And I'll tell you something, straight away with this beer, you can smell some of those lovely fruity notes coming out of it. This beer apparently is hopped with uh, Citra and Simcoe, so kind of some of the more old school hops. Those were all one... Uh, you know, those were part of the big three along with Amarillo of the high alpha acid hops a good couple of years ago. It was Citra, Simcoe and uh, Amarillo that everyone always used to kind of go on about. Um, and you can really smell some of those lovely fruity notes with this beer as you open it up. So if I hold this beer up to the light, it's a very bright, kind of murky yellow colour, this one. Just, if I put my fingers behind this, just look at how hazy that beer is there. There's a solid finger. I would say a three-quarter finger of a frothy, perfect white head on this one. It's not even creamy colour, it's definitely a sort of perfect white. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But, you know, overall, this one does look exactly as you would expect from a New England IPA, regardless of what type it is. But with it being a double IPA, that's probably the reason why it is so kind of soupy and gloopy, if you like. But my fingers behind the glass, there you can see at the level of haze. On, uh, on this beer actually. So let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this beer. Yeah, straight away that beer comes across really, really quite nicely. Now one of the things I've always said about Simcoe, and Simcoe seems to be getting replaced with Galaxy um, a lot of the time these days. Simcoe I always found it was the classic sort of passion fruity hop. Um, but Galaxy just has a, another degree of kind of pungency to it as well as a little bit of complexity with like pineapple and sometimes peachy notes and things like that. Simcoe to me was always a bit of a classic sort of more milky passion fruity flavour, uh, aroma, flavour and aroma I guess you could say in the hop um, and Citra still seems to be really quite popular but Simcoe was always very straight up and I'm guessing that's the reason why maybe Galaxy has replaced it a little bit but this beer in some ways is just a little bit nostalgic because of the, the way the Simcoe comes out in this and you're going to notice that as soon as you smell the aroma of this beer the fruity notes in this come across as very milky and um, very juicy to be honest with you um, so yeah, lovely big passion fruity note in there definitely some mango to be honest with you, I would guess as well that there you know, if I had to guess, I would think there's maybe a little bit of like, um, could it be like Nelson Sovine or something like that, maybe even Idaho 7 in this, because there is something else that's just a little bit lighter and more juicy in this beer too. There's almost a little bit of a green grapey kind of limey note. The other, if it's limes, it could be like Equinot, um, of course, that's a big limey hop. Um, 
and Waiiti, I guess, is the other one. It could be from New Zealand, but I think that's quite unlikely. And um, those are the two big limey hops. But yeah, you've got a nice kind of almost limey note to this one, I think. Um, definitely some juicy mangoes and passion fruit and stuff like that. Um, a little bit of a pineapple-y, apricot -y, papaya type thing. More papayas rather than anything else, to be honest with you. Um, so yeah, that on, in terms of the fruity notes, it's really interesting. This is one of the juiciest um, New England double IPAs that I've come across in terms of uh, aroma. This one smells really quite light and really very juicy, actually. But you can feel that sort of saturating your nose a little bit. So yeah, to sum it up, a bit of lime. Almost a bit of a kind of green grapey type thing to it as well, to be honest with you. Passion fruits, um, a little bit of a kind of papaya apricot type thing as well. Maybe, as I say, a little bit of lime in there as well. A really interesting aroma coming out of this beer. In terms of the green side of the hops, um, if you take it in quite deeply, I'd say there's a good floral presence to it, but I think it leans a little bit more towards the grassy side of things. It's actually very well blended between being grassy and quite floral actually. Um, not really a real earthiness to this one. Sometimes you can get that if you use, for example, mosaic or something like that in the uh, in the hot base as well, but or the hot profile I should say. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely a kind of nice fruity, juicy New England IPA, um, but also quite grassy and light if that makes sense. On the malty side of things, um, you can really smell the OT creaminess coming out in this one. There's a little bit of a biscuity note in there as well and you're getting a kind of underlying of the um, the sort of pale malty base actually out of this too. This These beers, I've said this in a couple of the other Treehouse ones, these really remind me of the uh, ones that I had from Jagovar Brewery in uh, Russia recently. They come across as very light but also really quite juicy to be honest with you and with the other ones that I tried, especially the Julius in the green, um, those were very light but very drinkable New England IPAs actually. So I'm curious to see whether this continues on into this beer because I think out of all the ones that I had, this one is perhaps the heaviest. I think it was the haze like 8.2 or something like that, I can't quite remember but I think this beer might be a little bit heavier than the haze that I reviewed for you before. But as I always say, take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck in. But it's quite amazing the amount of flavour you'll get out of these beers when you consider how sort of light and juicy the aroma is actually. So yeah, take a bit of time and enjoy the aroma for yourself, but we're going to have a taste of this one now and see how we get on. This one is The Perfect Storm, a New England double IPA from Treehouse Brewing Company in Charlton, Massachusetts. Once again, a huge thank you to Chris Contreras for sending this beer up to Sweden for me. Let's get stuck in. Slange skull. Yeah, that beer is kind of ridiculous, to be honest. Um, that is insane. No, so I'm going to just say straight away, this gets a thumbs up from me. Um, this is really quite good. That drinkability that I was talking about a minute ago, that really is there. You know, if it wasn't for the strength of the flavour in this one, and you can tell that this beer is a little bit higher in alcohol, but the really amazing thing about this is that even with that, it seems to re retain this sort of crazy level of drinkability to, you know, that's, that to me that's just, it, it's just crazy. Um, this has got a the level of alcohol you'd expect from like a West Coast double IPA, but it's got the drinkability almost of like a Helles or a Dunkel or these kind of beers that I drank when I, I lived in Germany. This is this is mental. It's crazy actually. But thumbs up to uh, to Treehouse Brewing for this one. That's this is a crazy beer. And from what Chris was telling me, this isn't even the best of the ones that he sent me. So we'll need to see how we get on with that. I'll tell you about that later. But yeah, that is really something else. Let's try and break the flavour of this one down then. So, with this beer, what you're going to notice about it is straight away, the middle of your palate is blanketed with that nice, smooth, white bready wheaty note. I suspect that there's a little bit of Pilsner malt or something in here as well, and that's probably contributing to how drinkable this beer is. And I've noticed that's a trend in some of the Swedish New England IPAs these days, as well as some of the Danish ones. They do tend to put a little bit of that Pilsner malt in there, just to give the beer a bit of that kind of crisp edge to it, but I think 
it's a bit dangerous when it comes to these big boys, the big double IPAs. Um, it really gives you a, a crazy level of drinkability. One of the things I always said, and it was Brewski Microbrewery from Helsingborg here in Skoda, that I always used to say it with, they produced some beautiful um, New England double IPAs and things like that. But I always felt when you go above the 8% mark, that's when you start to struggle with this style to cover the booziness. Because you can, with a West Coast IPA, you just stick in some caramel or something like that. And that kind of takes over. You can't really get away with that with the New England doubles because you know it's supposed to have quite a smooth, creamy malt base, and it just doesn't cover the alcohol in the same way. I've had a few triple New England IPAs, and um, I think that again, I think that's something that works with the West Coast beers, but it's a lot harder to pull off with the New England ones. I have to admit. Um, but yeah, this is the, the, I mean, this is a beautiful beer. That malt base is very smooth and very wheaty. You can pick up some of the pilsner crispness towards the back of your palate as well. And as you move in towards the centre tongue, you can feel that there's a little bit of an oaty quality to this one. But I don't think there's too much in the way of oats being used in the malt base here. And then in the very centre of your palate, you can pick out a little bit of a biscuity note. And the further that you go into the aftertaste, you get more of that kind of biscuity sweetness there as well, which is quite interesting. But yeah, I like how that goes together, but you really can tell just how boozy this beer is. Just from It's just the sheer strength of the flavour in this one, actually. But obviously it's been dry hopped as well. And I will say, this one does come across as, uh, as pretty fresh. I'm not sure how long Chris had it for before he sent it up to me and things like that, or how long it was since it was canned at brewery and stuff. Um, but it does come across, it's just at its nice point now. I always think you have to leave the New England's about three, maybe four weeks, just to let them mellow out a bit. And it's really, I think, in its kind of prime just now. So very lucky to be able to review this one at this uh, particular time, if you like. So, um, yeah. Um, the hoppy side of this beer there, I think we've covered the malt base quite well. It doesn't really have any undertones or anything. It's a very straight up malt base for me. Sometimes you can get a little bit of a woody quality out of it, but to me very straight up white bready and wheaty, a little bit of oaty creaminess, some biscuit in there, and uh, definitely a bit of that Pilsner crispness towards the back of the palate. On the hoppy side of things then, uh, the back corners you will detect a teeny teeny little bit of earthiness in there. Um, I don't think they're using yeah, I, I don't think they're using like Columbus or anything as a bittering hop in this. I think they are using the Citra and the Simcoe as both the uh, the bittering and the aroma hops in this beer. And as I've told you in other videos, it's all about at what point in the brew that you add that in. If you add them just when you're starting the boil, you'll get a hell of a lot of bitterness out of them. But if you add them later on, you get that trade-off between uh, bitterness and flavour and aroma profile. So I think they're j just going by the way the floral character in this. I think they've only got the the two types of hops in this. But as you come further forward along the the front sides of your tongue, you can feel that nice floral aromaticity there. Uh, and as you go round the front curve of the palate, it's that little bit lighter and grassy. But I think the beer does lean a little bit more towards the floral aromatic side of things, and that again helps cover the alcohol a little bit in this beer. But yeah, um, this beer again, it feels, it does feel, it, while it does feel light, you can feel a little bit of the almost dustiness with these beer. And I've always felt that like dry hopped beers feel a little bit more dusty than the regular ones. And I, I found that recently with a, a collaboration um, IPA that I had, a, a collaboration IPA from, it was Lervig and Amundsen from up in Norway, the most dry hopped beer in Scandinavia, like 80 grams per litre or something they dry hopped it to. It was mental, but you really felt the dustiness in that. But it must be the case, once you let these beers kind of settle and mellow out a little bit, you just, it, it rounds off a lot better, the beer just kind of mellows out. But with this one, it really is, um, the, the, it's, all right. it's at that point where it has just rounded out quite nicely. But the fruity side of this beer is coming out in that little oily bubble that you always get behind the front curve of the tongue. And for me, again, it's really quite straight up. If you go to the back of that bubble, um, you'll, get a, you'll get a little bit of that. There's maybe a teeny, teeny bit of grapefruit in this one, which will be from the Citra. But it really, the back of the, the fruity side of the beer, uh, of that fruity bubble, is kind of dominated by the passion fruit, which is the Simcoe. And it comes across as quite, it's almost... Um, just a little bit more kind of milky, milkshakey, to be honest. Pardon me with you, when I think about how it is compared to the Galaxy, the Galaxy is a lot more 
pungent, but this this one, the, the passion fruity notes you get in this beer are just a lot lighter and more juicy. But as you come further forward from that, it evolves to be a little bit more kind of mango-like. There's maybe some papayas in there, maybe even a little touch of like pineapple or something like that. And as you reach the very kind of front edge of the tongue, you can get some of these little complexities that you'll always find from uh, from Citra. And you might be forgiven for thinking when you take this beer in, it's got a little bit of an almost kind of peachy sharpness to it as well. You really get that behind the front curve of the tongue there. But in the, um, just behind that front curve of the tongue, those sort of complexities from the, the Citra, I think in this one it comes across as being a little bit limey uh, in the beginning. Like it feels a little bit dry on the front of your tongue so I would say a little bit limey but then perhaps as you go further into the aftertaste it evolves to be a little bit more of a, a kind of gooseberry type flavour which is really interesting but the way all these flavours go together in this beer is um, is really kind of it is really quite interesting and I have to admit this is a, an absolutely solid um, New England double IPA you'll find some things that are very close to this from the likes of Brewski in Helsingborg here in Skåne um, you know some of the stuff you'll get from the likes of Gamma Brewing over in Copenhagen as well is very kind of similar to this. But this this one, the thing that's always surprised me about the Treehouse beers is that they're very light and drinkable, but they do, especially the big boys like this, they really do have a big punchy kind of flavour to them actually. The malt base is lovely and smooth in this. Um, so yeah, just enjoy the flavour of this. I mean, it's difficult to kind of relate these to beers in Europe if you like, but I think it's somewhere between what you would get from Brewski in Helsingborg and Gamma Brewing from uh, from Copenhagen in Denmark. Dry and bitter over there, and some of the Amar Brewers stuff as well would be quite uh, it would be quite comparable to this. So yeah, just have a go at this one for yourself if you get the chance and see what you think. But to me, this is a beautiful um, New England double IPA. In terms of the mouthfeel, then, um, and this is quite an interesting point about this beer. Yeah. This beer, I think it's at the top end of mid-bodied. I don't think it's quite full-bodied. Carbonation is very smooth. It really comes across as quite oily, this beer, to be honest with you. There is a degree of wetness to it and a bit of lightness, um, but to me it's quite an oily New England IPA, at least compared to the other ones I've had from, uh, from Treehouse. There is a degree of crispness to it as well. Like I was talking about, there is an element of Pilsner malt in the middle of your palate too, I think. Um, but as you, um, w with this beer, in terms of the IBUs and stuff like that, I think we must be talking about 60 IBUs with this, at least. I think it's around 50 or 60 IBUs. Um, there's a good little bit of, uh, of there, there's a little bit of sweetness in the middle of your palate, but mainly it's quite smooth, but you do get a bit of biscuity and some, and a little touch of oaty sweetness in there as well. And you've got a nice, kind of quite juicy, fruity quality to this beer as well. But overall, this is just a beautiful New England double IPA. You can't really say much more about it than that. They've done an awesome job of this. And, um, you know, when Chris is telling me that this isn't the best one he's sent me, that really makes me very curious about the other ones. So, um, yeah, we'll just need to see how we go along with that. You will see a few other different styles from Treehouse Reviewed on here over the next couple of weeks too. But um, yeah, let's just leave it at that for this one. The Perfect Storm from the Weather Series at Treehouse Brewing Company. A beautiful New England double IPA. Surprised at how drinkable this one is at 8%. Um, but it does have a really nice bite to the flavour as well. And with the Citra and Simcoe in there, it's got a kind of nice classic hop combination that we all know works. So yeah, nothing that you can really complain about with this beer. It's just really solid. But with a brewery like a, with a name like this, you wouldn't really expect anything else, would you? So um, yeah, let's leave it at that. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Treehouse Brewing Company as well. Um, I will return to these guys over the next couple of videos and I hope you enjoy those as well. Check out my social media but most importantly check out some of these Treehouse Brewing Company beers if you get the chance. A huge thank you again to Chris for making this review possible and I hope you enjoy the next ones in this mini series. Until the next time, slander just now and I'll catch you guys later. The Perfect Storm New England Double IPA at 8% from Treehouse Brewing Company in Charlton, Massachusetts, America. Slander, skull, cheers.